Hello my friends and welcome to Fishery. So today we're going to be talking about when the bottom of your tank, your substrate and your mulm goes bad. What is going on? And I have an example that is unlike any I've ever seen. This tank went really bad and it's one of my filterless tanks and I'm going to tell you just exactly why it went bad and why I let it keep going bad to show you guys this example. So let's talk about how the buildup of mulm can be a really good thing, but once you've done that, you've kind of created a ticking time bomb for what could happen in your tank later down the road and what conditions you need to avoid, especially if you're going filterless, uh, deep substrate, or low tech. Uh, tanks, then you really need to watch out for this. So let's look at the tanks and let's talk about mulm. All right, my friends, I'm going to have to apologize for the glare, but this is one of the worst situations I've ever seen of fungi in an aquarium. And why did this happen? I actually know, and it was an experiment that I let occur. Now, there's something that I'm going to tell you that's going to make some people mad, but uh, I had rosy barbs and gold barbs in this five-gallon container, and uh, I put them in a pond. Before that, I had some white cloud minnows that I cycled the container with. Well, apparently, they had babies, and I didn't know about it. So I took the, the barbs out, put them in the pond about five months ago, and now there are white clouds, just two of them left, and they're hanging out in the top half of the water. Now, I have been very sick. I was in the hospital, and I was also in Florida. I was traveling. I was in Southern California. So quite frankly, I neglected this tank because it was self-sufficient. There were enough shrimp, enough algae, and the kinds of fish that were in here were eating those things when they were in here. And then when I took the fish out, I thought, well, there's no fish in there. It's just plants. I won't worry about it. And these guys were able to grow up one without having anything in this tank because of how I set it up. And there's actually two videos on setting this whole ecosystem up. But I want you to notice something. The plants have all melted severely in this tank. And that's one generation of plants, of crypts, that are just absolutely devastated. I mean, they're dead. And when plants melt, they create ammonia. Well, I also looked around in the substrate with the flashlight carefully, and there were the corpses of two fish. Now, I was surprised there was anything left of them, because uh, usually fish get eaten by bacteria and the shrimp and the other critters in the tank pretty quickly. Well, in this case, there is not enough oxygen down low because there is no filtration in this tank. There's no aeration. There's no mixing going on. The fish were mixing the oxygen and the plants were producing the oxygen down low in the tank. Now, when you have especially a water column this tall compared to such a deep substrate, your substrate does something really interesting, and that is it becomes anoxic or anaerobic. That means it has low oxygen anyways. Now, normally, this is great because the mulm layer, which right here, this is all the mulm from two years right here, that brown and that uh, kind of cinnamon to, uh, to light brown, brown sugar color, all that black, which is actually dark brown in the daytime, but it's easier to film here, uh, with the glare on a cylinder uh, and all this stuff here is just delicious nutritious stuff that the fish the shrimp and the snails that were in here created over two years now and this is fungus that is networking and just completely out of control going bonkers and the reason it's able to do that is the low oxygen. Now, fungus needs oxygen, so that may seem strange to you. Now, here you can see a clear fungus, different from the white networking fungus, and that is a fungus that actually eats the, uh, it, it eats the cellulose out of plants. So when you put a new piece of wood in a tank and it turns white and milky, that's what's going on. And if we look higher up in the oxygenated levels of this tank, 
you can see it's happening on other pieces of where bark has fallen into the tank. And the fungi is growing, but it's not going wild. Uh, it's just doing its thing, going a little bit. And actually fish and little insects and snails and shrimp, they love that. Um, they love that white film off of uh, wood. It's, it's a healthy fungus. We also have here plants. Uh, we have very tall plants coming out of this tank now. The Creeping Jenny has passed away with the season last year, and I've just left it because this is an experiment. And look how tall this, this ecosystem is now with the uh, papyrus relative growing tall and up out of here. So it's been flourishing, and I was wondering, why is it doing so well? And that's what kind of made me look closer at this tank with the flashlight and see, oh my goodness, this tank has gone feral. And in a way that is really gross to a lot of people, but it's also fascinating. So I was doing some reading and I was talking to a couple professors uh, and one in particular, a mycologist. Um, a lot of you may know, but anyways, uh, <laughs> if you guys like Paul Stamets, uh, drop a little mushroom icon in the chat. You should check him out. But in any case, he's based here in Washington State, and I asked what is going on. And in waterlogged soil, or in water that doesn't move at all, or in deep substrate, or in soils that are compacted, Fungi can still live. Now, fungi need oxygen, and they can create an oxygen layer around them if there is uh, molecular oxygen. However, if there is no environmental oxygen that they can break uh, away from other particles, then they're in trouble. So CO2, NO2, um, or N2O, rather, um, those things are, are actually uh, chemicals that the uh, fungi can use. So what's going on in our tank normally is we have good bacteria that turns the ammonia to nitrites and the nitrites to nitrates, two types of fungi. You guys know the cycle. That's still going on up high in the water where oxygen exchange is going on. There's very small surface area in this cylinder. So this is a unique situation probably wouldn't happen in an in a open tank with big area, surface area. But because it's so deep to how tall it is, the water column didn't mix at all. And so you get all these different fungus groups growing, and these are actually fruiting and uh, sporulating or sporulating. Uh, and that's what you're seeing on the ends of those columns, the little fuzzy things. And now we've got fungus-eating mite micro uh, animals that have started to grow in massive numbers here, some sort of little paramecium uh, that I think is what the baby fish grew up on. So the fungus is eating the plants and breaking it down and our world would literally be full of junk and full of dead things if we didn't have detrivores like fungus and bacteria. And then we've got also a bunch of cyanobacteria here. Now cyanobacteria, usually like oxygen, but they'll do just fine as long as they have light. They are bacteria hybridized with, uh, with algae, for lack of a better explanation at the moment. And down here, we've got a nutrient-rich layer of aquasoils. And between all the nutrients in the mulm and the aquasoils and no oxygen... And an ammonia spike from the plants not getting that oxygen and all these plants melting. Now plants love ammonia in trace amounts. They'd rather have that than, uh, than other, uh, nitrogenous substances in many cases. But what happened is this was going on in the water column and not in the root column where they surround their roots with oxygen and then the layer that doesn't have oxygen right next to it, literally there might be a millimeter or two of oxygen around the roots. Well, then they work with bacteria or fungi in a mycorrhizal relationship is what it's called. And they exchange things. So they exchange nitrogen, which all plants and animals need, but plants and animals and fungi were not good at getting nitrogen out of ammonia. So we have to fix it into 
uh, well, we have to have bacteria fix it into the nitrates. And from those, they were fixed before that by bacteria into nitrites. Before that, it was ammonia. Now, the pH also matters. So if the pH is over uh, about 7.0, the ammonia is fairly toxic in a tank like this. Now, if the pH had been lower, like in a black water tank, we've talked about this in other videos, then it becomes ammonium instead of ammonia, uh, and the ammonia evaporates up and out of the water very quickly, can't build up, and the ammonium is much less toxic. For every degree, uh, so from 6.0 to 7.0 in the pH chart, uh, it goes up tenfold. So at 8.0 pH versus 6.0, your ammonia and ammonium are actually 100 times more toxic to your fish. So if you have a black water or low acid tank, or sorry, high acid tank, low pH tank, then ammonia is not something you have to worry about as much, nor do you even have to worry about the ammonia cycle as much or the nitrogen cycle as much. But in this tank, which was fairly neutral to slightly acidic, we had cyanobacteria, which has gone wild here uh, in this low oxygen. It's probably not no oxygen, but then we hit an area right here where we see iron and sulfur being oxidized. Right below that layer, according to a chemical and biological engineer that worked for Seachem that I'm friends with, right below that layer, if you, especially if you see a red line of, of orange rust or, or uh, orange to red color in your soil, right below that line is where the oxygen stops. So it's likely that the oxygen completely stops here and we get this black and um, it's actually a shiny cyanobacteria that's a deep, deep red to brown. It's probably eating the sulfur and the iron. Now, sulfur and iron are also needed by the bacteria and the fungi that live here because these fungi are actually taking the ammonia. Well, the bacteria, let me take a step back. The bacteria in the water is taking the ammonia and... Uh, what it's able to do is the exact reverse of what goes on in your nitrogen cycle. So it is feeding the ammonia to the, to the, uh, to the fungi here, yet it's oxygenated in the water just enough that these plants are surviving, those little critters are surviving in the water, these little uh, single-celled uh, paramecium are surviving. But what happens is the exact opposite reaction right in this top layer of mulm and soil because of all the nutrients the bacteria here this black and kind of green bacteria that's actually taking the nitrogen which there's far more of in in the plant content that has died from the ammonia spike and the lack of oxygen in the tank being mixed and it's actually uh taking that and reversing ammonia into nitrites with one bacteria and then into nitrates uh, up in the water, like we said, it's doing the exact opposite. So it's taking nitrates, turning them into nitrites, and then turning them into ammonia. And that ammonia is then fixed and transported by the bacteria to shared networks with the fungi. That's why the fungi are ginormous down here in the low oxygen water, because there's enough oxygen for them to survive, but there is also low enough oxygen right here in our mulm for the fungi to feed it. And same with the algae. So we'll get algae higher up in the tank. But up here, we see it's much greener. There's much less, sorry, that's dust. But there's much less of the algae and bacteria. It can't grow into these massive uh, things. Now the fish are actually eating that. And I'm sorry that I did this experiment on living fish, but it was kind of necessary to recreate the ecosystem. Okay, so let's look at a healthy tank. This is really important, though, to know that this can happen if you don't either aerate or have fish moving around to aerate, if you don't have all those little invertebrates and micro-ecosystem food web elements like snails and things, uh, and you don't have a good enough light for the plants to be... Uh, photosynthesizing and releasing enough oxygen into the water column 
Then any little spike of ammonia, like a dead fish or a dead plant, can actually turn into a runaway chain reaction just like this. And that is really gnarly. I mean, that's my thumb, like my pinky. These are some giant fungus formations. So let's just look at a healthy substrate to compare. This is actually pretty healthy over here. You can see the reddish color here. That's probably an iron uh, concentration as well. But let's go look at another substrate just to show you the contrast. All right, so here is a tank that's doing really well, obviously. The plants are going crazy. And right here, you can see, look at that iron-rich layer. We got a little bit of cyanobacteria down here, down below, uh, but nothing major. And down here, we've got plants breaking down, and but we've got fish happily hanging out. We've got snails. We've got this, the, the remnants of old snails, and the plants aren't melting at all, obviously. Uh, and we've got the aqua soil right here. You can see that the plant roots are all good and they're infused where there were no plant roots seeking out that deep, uh, deep stuff. And here you can see that the plant roots go all the way down into the anoxic layer. So they're getting their ammonia from that deep, deep layer there. And the byproduct of that bacteria is actually laughing gas. It's nitrous oxide. But here you can see right where the oxygen ends. And this is all mulm right here, this brown layer. And again, that kind of cinnamon layer before the rust layer and the black. That's all nutrients and mulm and minerals that have built up from this tank running for two years. Uh, and we've got flow being mixed around here. And we've got lots of light to photosynthesize and oxygenate the water with the plants. So that's the big difference. Now, even over here, too, where we've got another runaway busy container, you can see here we've got a whole bunch of cyanobacteria growing, and that's because that other light right across from it is shining on it, but it's only surface deep. So we come around the other side, and look at this. It's not growing. But what that does tell us is that there's a little bit of oxygen probably, uh, but it's probably very low. And look at the layer of mulm in this one. It's almost two inches thick right here. Uh, it almost goes two inches tall in some places on this tank here. Um, so this is a really healthy tank. All the fish are doing really well in here. And this is a filterless tank with just a light on it. But it shows you that if that ammonia got spiked in here high enough, started melting plants, started killing other fish, and you got even more ammonia, then it can cause that reverse cycle to spike. And your mulm all of a sudden starts working against you rather than for you as just feeding your plants nutrients. So it's something important to know. Uh, even if it probably won't happen in a tank that has uh, running water, filtration, and uh, movement. Even if it has lots of fish moving the water and lots of plants and plenty of light, it probably still won't happen. But in the location over here, never mind the Halloween decorations, this container was the perfect condition, and I let it run away, to grow that and amplify that effect that you can have happen. Now, even a small amount of this going on can easily kill your fish and your micro ecosystem. But because this tower, this cylinder is so tall, the fish has oxygen up there still. And it's eating the paramecium, maybe even the fungi that's in the water. And the ammonia is still being processed by all the surface area up here and the sunlight from outside the window. So, Kind of an interesting situation, kind of a unique situation that it got so out of control. But see, this doesn't have nearly the light as the other tank. And that's why this occurred, is the plants started dying, and then the slow-growing plants weren't making enough oxygen. Then the fish died, then the plants started to melt, and uh, then all that occurred and turned into a runaway process. This has been Alexander Williamson with Fishtree. Thank you so much for watching. If you guys enjoyed the content, you can subscribe, 
hit that thumbs up it really does help share it with someone who's interested that helps a ton too and of course check in for the latest videos uh, maybe even become a member if you want to get closer to the community and tied in and learn even more about the science that's going on in the aquarium world all right guys have a great day and i'll see you next time bye